I guess we should have started. <laughs> Start it now? Yeah, I just hit the button. <laughs> oh, shit. Way to tell me, bro. <laughs> <laughs> new Year, so, new me. Come on, man. We don't record an episode in a year. You don't even give me a chance. As soon as I turn my camera on, you just ready to go. Because, oh, cause, hey, hey, New Year, New Me, dude, it's still in that same damn Burger King parking lot. Look, man, new 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 year, new episode of Big Boy Sports that I don't get told the recording just started. <laughs> I hit- so I'm your host, <laughs> Rocco. This is my co-host, Darren Silver, and his big-ass nose already being obnoxious. <laughs> dude, is just getting off the air here. But... We got a lot to talk about. We got the Royal Rumble coming up. We got the NFL playoffs coming up. And we got a very, very special guest, a graduate of Full Sail University and a fellow radio show host himself, especially of the show So Disrespectful. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Ricardo Green. We are ready. Let's go. How you feeling? Don Suave in the house. Everything good. Everything good. I love it. How y'all guys doing? I'm good, man. You get you got the background ready. You got the Zoom name ready. He's ready to go for this. Yes, sir. You know we got the Caribbean behind us. That's right. And that, that's 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 what he wants to make everybody think. I love it. It's beautiful. <laughs> now, how you doing, man? Oh man, everything good, man. I just you know just come off of work. Uh, did ODU but women's basketball yesterday. Got to do it again in two more days and. I mean, just staying busy, man. That's all we can do. Yeah, man. That's all you can do. Just keep, just keep putting shit on there. I love that, man. But I mean, how did you get into sports, though? How did you get into sports? How did you get into wanting to be involved with it? Was it something that you loved from a young age? Like, how did it start with you? I think it was always destiny, man. I remember I was seven years old. This is nineteen ninety-five. The Dallas Cowboys just won the Super Bowl, and they had a charity event at uh, Hampton Coliseum. And I remember back in the day, I don't know if y'all remember, but there was a toy that had the little jukebox that had a face up there, and it had a little mic to it. And for some odd reason, one of the office alignment was talking to my mom, and I don't know what I said. <laughs> I just know that she was talking to her, and I had a mic. I don't know if I said jibber jabber, jibber jabber, whatever, but I, remember I, I had the mic in my, my, my hand, and I put it to him. And he looked at me, he started laughing. He was like, oh, he, he a funny little dude. And then, next oh. thing you know, about 20 years later, I got a, a, a tweet from uh, Sports Hill University saying, hey, you want to be a sports broadcaster? I thought it was a lie. I never heard of this school. I was like, okay, it might be a scam. So if I sign in, I'm going to sign right back out. Next thing you know, I did it. Guy called me, said, talk to me. I talked. He said, I'm going to give you a scholarship, a momentum scholarship. And then after that, I went to school, and the rest is history. Two years in the books and graduated. That's good, man. So pretty much it was just something that kind of just almost, I don't want to say popped in your lap a little bit because you did two years of school for this. But it's just something that kind of just, you know, the opportunity popped up and you just decided to go for it. Absolutely. Like, um, I always say it like this, there's four things in life I could work and have the greatest peace of mind, which is sports, movies, video game, music. So when sports came along, it was only because Brian Mitchell, if anybody knows, I'm a Washington Commander fan. Brian Mitchell on his show said, if you want to talk to us, go on Twitter. I never used Twitter. So I was like, okay, how you, how you, what, what do we do? I tweet it. <laughs> that's all I knew. I tweet something. And then right under it, that's what popped up. And I'm looking like I could talk sports all day for free and had the greatest peace of mind. So I said, well, let's let's do this, let's do two worlds right now. Get paid for it and talk about it. Best of both worlds. I love it. Yo, this is big boy sports. And he said that like it was the four food groups. You hear that? No, I heard that. You know, <laughs> but you know what, John? This is refreshing that we finally got a football fan on here that's got a worse team than both of ours. Because <laughs> I mean we got I mean we got playoff teams for once. This is this no. is you remember, I mean, you, you remember, John, you remember the first I mean, ever, listen, you remember, hold listen. On, hold on, John. no, listen, you remember the first ever Big Boy Sports episode we ever did, we talked about that soup, that Halloween game 
<laughs> the Lions versus the Eagles. Remember that? That was the first ever episode. We talked about that game. Uh, I'm, still waiting. I'm still waiting for you guys to beat us, all right? So don't start with us. <laughs> we, we ain't even, dude, we ain't even gonna get to play you in the playoffs, dude. You guys are looking sad right now. That's what we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about them Eagles. Uh, <laughs> see, see. That's the Philadelphia <laughs> chicken wings right now, dude, because they get made up. We got, we got we got a bunch of different games we can talk about. We don't have to go into that one right now. Okay, okay. I'm feeling a little, feeling a little nauseous. Need some Pepto. All right. <laughs> At least y'all could talk. I can't talk. I got to wait till March. <laughs> hey, but, you got, but, but I'm hearing you guys might get that number one draft pick, though. They might trade. You might get Caleb Williams. So. You know. yeah, it, it all depends to me how the Bears do. Like it, the, the fans want to keep Justin Fields. Sure. I don't know what Manson want to do, but I know if they do keep Justin Fields, it's only smart to go get Marvin Harrison Jr. Because you can pair him up with DJ Moore. But it all depends on what they want to do. I mean, I'm I'm yeah. not gonna I'm not an expert, you know. <clears throat> but I'm but, just saying I think I think if you get an O line around Sam Howell, I think Sam Howell could be so because he started the season off hot. I mean he just don't have a team. I mean, he's got – and the thing is with him, he, he needs better coaching. Ron Rivera is out, but he wanted to spread the ball around. Like, I was looking at the stats and everything, and he wanted to give everybody opportunities, and that's fine. Like, I get it, you know. But this isn't youth basketball where it's like, okay, we want to get people a chance. Like, it's the NFL. Terry McLaurin needed some more opportunities. Not because I had him in my fantasy football league for a good <laughs> half the season, but he needed opportunities. He's an all-star, so he's sitting there on the bench. And he's like, when am I getting my shot? You know what I mean? He's not – they're not going deep with him. It's just, I, I don't know, man. Let me not. See, most of what the stuff it? with Washington is playmaking. And I kind of contribute that to Eric B. Enemy. You know, yeah. if you know your Eric, if you know your offensive line can't block, then you shouldn't be doing these plays that's got to take so long to develop, especially for a rookie quarterback. I mean, so that's what the biggest issue was with Sam Howell. He was trying to wait until it develops, and then he'll throw it. That's why, we, I mean, I know a lot of people want to talk about Jacoby Bissett, but he's a veteran. If you look at it, a lot of his passes were put, getting the receiver open because he didn't have to wait. And then, yeah, you like I said, spread it out. But if you're number one receiver is Terry McLaurin, you do whatever you, it takes to get him the ball. And they start doing it. Technically, when we out the playoffs, the reverses, the screens, the slants, what you're supposed to be doing in the first place, not wait to 15 yards down the field for him to do a slant or a post or whatever and then throw it. Knowing you got Andrew Wiley who can't block a little kid, he and, and, and then he gets sacked all the time. So it got to I could you to the play caller of of Washington. Here's well, I will saying. say I will say this. Hold on, let me let me get a word in here. I'll say this. There were some games though. I know y'all ended four thirteen, but there were some games where that offense was able to put up points and it was able to be explosive. And there were some games that Washington was able to score. There's some games where they put up 30. There's games where Sam Howell had, you know, threw his fair share of touchdowns. So there were there were games where even even in some losses where points were getting put up. So I don't think it makes sense for Washington just to completely clean house. It was time for Ron Rivera to go. Ron Rivera ran his course in Washington. I'm not sure Sam Howell's the answer either, but you know, you throw Eric Bieniemy in there in the offensive coordinator position. You have games where they could score points in an offense with a staff that has looked anemic in past years, to be honest with you. So, with that being said, again, you know, certain people, I don't know if they're the answer. Ron Rivera's not. Sam Howell, I don't think is personally. But I don't think it makes sense to completely clean out. So here's what I'm going to say. Get ready, guys. Get ready. It's the first controversial take of the year, you know. First, the first one, you know, there's been plenty of them. But I'm starting to think these NFL teams are like an ungrateful girlfriend. All right. They're like an ungrateful girlfriend or, you know, ungrateful boyfriend. That's why Bill Belichick got to let go today. You said what? That's why Bill Belichick got to let go today. Uh, that, I mean, that's a whole that's a whole different melting pot we could definitely get into. But – my thing is like ungrateful girlfriend because you got all these our boyfriend, but like it's like they got all these different quarterbacks. They got all these different quarterbacks. I mean, it's got Desmond Ritter, Ritter, you know, and they've got Taylor Heineke. Like I think Taylor Heineke never got a fair share in the NFL. I mean, you know, he's he's got you know he's got bounced around and everything. He, you know, he didn't have like a team. And the thing is, is I'm thinking you're going to draft all these players to come in and be the starting quarterback. 
I mean, I'm not saying that there's quarterbacks in the NFL draft class that couldn't be a starting quarterback. I think Caleb, I think Caleb Williams, I think he could come in the league and I think he could be a starting quarterback. I will, I will say that, but I'm thinking like a lot of these guys shouldn't come in the league and be starting quarterbacks. A lot of these guys should get drafted, be like a Kirk Cousins kind of situation, sit behind people, kind of learn a little bit because, you know, that's why you draft these people so they can learn. Uh, what are you going to do if, if you're Atlanta and you're drafting another quarterback, then you're going to have what? Desmond Ritter, Taylor Heineke, and the new guy. I mean, obviously one of those two are going to go, but you're either going to keep Taylor or Desmond, and then they're going to sit with the new guy, and then you got two guys sitting with the new guy, and then maybe you might bring in a Brian Hoyer or somebody. But what kind of experience is Brian Hoyer going to really bring to the team? You know what I mean? you, you got some older guy that's – it'd be like comedy. So I don't know if you, if you do comedy or not. Uh, uh, Rico, I don't know if you do comedy or not, but I know uh, you know me and John do. But it'd be like if you know we got some 40-year-old guy that's been doing comedy for – 15 years and then comes and tries to mentor um you know me and john and the only thing he's ever done is hosting a bar gig like that's not gonna i'm just not gonna do us any any good it's just gonna be another guy another body in the room i'm just saying i think these guys these nfl teams you know if you're gonna lose you're gonna lose i get it a quarterback's not gonna and okay i'm gonna i'm gonna lie i'm gonna lie a little bit but a quarterback's not gonna make or break a team it will yes it will make or break a team but you're not gonna not just draft. Him. You're not. But not you're, not, and you're not gonna draft a quarterback. I don't care who it is. You're not drafting a quarterback, and he's gonna take you to Super Bowl. I mean, maybe off the get go, but I mean, or maybe down the road, not off the get go. Maybe down the road. I mean, yeah. There's thir- there's 32 teams in the NFL, and yeah, every year somebody gets drafted on a Super Bowl team. So there are rookies that there every year a rookie more than likely wins a Super Bowl unless they get waived or whatever the case might be. So yeah, there is every year a rookie who's winning a Super Bowl. But is it going to be your quarterback? You know, I mean, C.J. Stroud's playing hot right now. But is he going to really take that Texan squad to the Super Bowl? Probably not, you know. Are they even going to get past the Browns? I don't know. I mean, they they could definitely be they could definitely beat the Browns. I think, didn't they play the Browns earlier in the season and they beat the Browns? Like, are the Browns beat them? I can't remember. But C.J. Stroud, that, that situation is a very unique one. That's why, to me, when they do Coach of the Year, D'Amico Ryan's better be top two. Oh, for sure. Texas took a worse team last season. That was bad. Now they're in the playoffs. No one had the Texans in the playoffs. No one. And mind you, I talked to ESPN. I talked to a lot of analysts when we do our stuff, our shows. No one even had Texans winning more than five games, if that. Now you see them right now in the playoffs, and they actually look like a team that could possibly do beat the Browns. I mean, they do look like a team that can do win. So, but going back to what you said, there has been times where you had a rookie quarterback that would come in and he actually did something. Look at Ben Roethlisberger. Remember his, his rookie season, he came in by Tommy Maddox and won with 15 and one. And a lot of people was looking like they might go to the Super Bowl. And then they, they, of course, they lost that year. And then the following year, they went to the Super Bowl. And the Kirk Cousins thing, he sat behind RG3. And that was a whole mess up uh, issue anyway, because Snyder won RG3. Shanahan wanted Kirk Cousins, and they basically clashed. And yeah. you see exactly what happened with that situation, too. I mean, RG3 is now, you know, doing commentary, and Kirk Cousins with the Vikings. So we see exactly that Shanahan was kind of right in the situation. But what I, what yeah. I, what, and it's definitely a weird situation. But, like, with him, is he just got to, he got to sit back and just watch. You know what I mean? I'm not saying, you know, no disrespect to RG3. I mean, obviously, yeah, it's not like a Tom Brady or a Peyton Manning or somebody that you're – learning expertise, but you're still, you're sitting back, you're watching how this guy plays, you know, and then you're seeing, oh, shit, RG3 is doing this play. It didn't work out. Okay, maybe I need to tweak this play a little bit, you know, kind of like, you know, with me and John in comedy. Okay, we sit back and, oh, that, 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 the stage presence wasn't working, or this didn't work, you know, so I think it's like you still got to sit back and you got to kind of, like, examine stuff. I mean, I'm going to tell you this, and I, I'm a, you know, I'm a Detroit Lions fan, but I'm still going to say Kirk Cousins is the best quarterback in the NFC North. I don't care what anybody says. I mean, and, you know, a hot tag, whatever you want to say. But, I mean, he's consistent. He's, he yeah, puts the points up. They, they just don't have a defense. The, the, the Vikings don't have a defense. I, I used to call him Jared Goof, but I don't know if I'd call him that. <laughs> no, he's still a goofball. He's still a goofball. I mean. I, I don't know, man. You know, they were talking know. about him being an MVP candidate in the beginning of the season. No, I definitely, definitely shouldn't be MVP. I mean, he's not. He's he's good. Golf's golf's good. I, I I mean I've seen this potential in him. Like I definitely seen this potential back, you know, when we were talking two years ago when we first started Big Boy Sports, or maybe it was three years ago. I can't remember. You know, it's been, it's been some time, but 
and you know, I was, you know, I was defending him, and I and I still will say, hey, he's, you know, he's a good quarterback, <clears throat> but he's not. You know, I don't know. Kirk Cousins just has a different, just has a different mentality. I mean, the injury, you know, it's it's definitely unfortunate, you know. And I, I'm gonna tell you this. I'm gonna tell you this as a Lions fan, and that blessing, that was a blessing in disguise. Because honestly, I don't know if if um, Curtis Cousins wasn't gonna hurt, get hurt, it didn't get hurt. I low key not saying I don't know if we would have won the NFC North. They would have been a battle between those two teams. First off, yeah. I want I want to get back to the Browns and the Texans, but let me just say this before that. I will, take, I will take Jared Goff over Kirk Cousins any day. I will take the you know. Super Bowl. Over the guy that can't get out of the first round of the playoffs. Yeah. All right. I mean, we'll Just say that. Hey, well, let he me... can't win the big one. Exactly. Well, the, he he got to the big one at least. I'm talking about he... Kirk Cousins. I'm talking about, okay, I'm about yeah, yeah, Washington <laughs> could win primetime games. Kirk Cousins can't even get there. <laughs> yeah. I'm... Okay, you got a point. You got a point because because got. Because golf's undefeated, I think, on those or no, was undefeated on those primetime games until we got screwed by the Cowboys. Let me let me tell you something. Ain't nothing big about Kirk Cousins except those chains he's wearing in the locker room. All right. You like this? You like this? Yeah, right now. Hey, I love that. You see those chains, man. <laughs> no, but let me say this: Can the Texans beat the Browns? They could, but I don't like the chance. And here, here, here's why. This is why I don't like the chances. You have guys, especially on that defense and in Joe Flacco, that are experienced. And Joe Flacco, he's tearing it up right now. He's showing the world that he still got it. He, he can still fling that football around. Oh, so sure. with oh, the combination sure. of a quarterback who's been there, not only been to the big dance, but won it, and – a good defense behind him, and he's playing well. I don't see any reason why the Browns shouldn't beat the Texans. This is a game I believe at least the Browns should win. Can the Texans do it? Do they have a puncher's chance? I believe yes. They 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 have a puncher's chance. But this is this is a game that I just feel the Browns should win. I feel like they have the personnel. Kevin Spansky. This year is a coach of the year candidate. They've had three or four quarterbacks then and have still been able to put a hell of a season together. And the way Joe Flacco has been playing, you know, I have no reason to believe the Texans won't win this game. Because who, think about it too. Who are D'Amico Ryan and CJ Stroud playing with? You got Nico I Collins, mean, bro. Collins, dude, Collins, going on the fantasy standpoint. Put up we, were talking, we were talking about a squad that you said that he, Rico said himself. We 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 thought was getting five wins at the most, and the worst part is that's an improvement. That's an improvement. <laughs> yeah. That would have been an improvement by itself. That's the worst part about it. And lo and behold, they make the playoffs with a rookie quarterback and head coach. But you know. The thing is, when you think about a five-win squad, you're not really thinking about the talent on that team. You're looking at the talent around them. You're like, who are these guys? You know, you've got Miles Garrett on the other team. You've got Nick Chubb on the other team. You've got a Super Bowl champion in Joe Flacco in the other team. You know, he got he got Amari Cooper. He's coming back too. That's right. Yeah, you got guys. That- on that team against you know two guys who are going to take the Texans places and I believe the Texans are going to be a big team on the rise there's going to be people that are going to be attracted by what they see in Houston and there's going to be people that want to come there but I just don't see them getting past the Browns this year and I think that's fine for the Texans right now I think the Texans are playing with house money but again, I don't believe that there's any reason the Browns should lose this game. I mean, I'm I'm gonna take them to go against you, man. Listen, you know, it's, it's big boy sports, but I'm going Texans, man. And I've had I've had CJ on my fantasy squad. I picked him up. People dropped him when he had when he had like a concussion. I picked him right up and put me some points up. You know, uh, so we got Singletary. Singletary's rushing the ball really well. Um, you know, started the season off not you know super great, but you know, run the ball super well. And then you got you know you got Nico Collins is out there playing, man. Like you got 
Great journalism, Dan. Great Am journalism, Darren. Basing your picks off of fantasy over here. I'm what just saying, and then, and, then, and then you got Dalton Schultz at tight end, dude. Like, I'm just saying, that's a that's and a scary thing. I said, you see that? No, I'm just, I'm just, telling, <laughs> I'm just, I'm just telling you that 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 offense came it came together at the right time. That's what I'm trying to I, say. I say with well, both of these teams. Both of these teams, honestly, it's just a hard thing. Honestly, my heart, you want both of these teams to win because they're both underdogs. No oh, one thought, sure. like I said, the Texas was going to be there. Nobody watching a football and, team wanting everybody to win. No, yeah, but honestly, <laughs> there's some teams that you like. Like Cowboys is what probably the most hated team right now. Oh, you get, sure. and, and it's because oh. of the fans. Just like the Eagles, it's because of the fans. And, you know, let's, let's be real. Obnoxious is just pitiful with it. But when it comes to the Browns, no one really, really thought Browns was going to do anything. Now, I, it, they had an X factor with Deshaun Watson, but no one really thought the Browns was going to do anything. And no one thought the Texans was going to do anything. So you got these two teams that actually came out of the mud and is in the playoffs. And it's like that underdog, like that, that, that the ugly duckly thing is getting a victory. And you love that. But like you said, it's NFL. And look, any given Sunday, anybody can win on a, on a Sunday. But yeah, like, you, like uh, John said, I don't see the Texans winning. And like they, they overachieve this. Whatever happens now is extra credit. They got an A on that test right now. If they win, it's A plus. But right now, the Browns, this Flacco, this Browns team remind me of the Flacco team that he had with Baltimore when the D, or he the defense was there with Ray Lewis and all that was there. And then on offense, he really didn't have that many weapons, but he still game managed. He had Anquan Bolden, Jacoby Jones. He still managed it. And they beat the Niners that year, even though it was a controversy at the end. But I really see that's Flacco doing. He's controlling everything. He's a veteran presence. Amari Cooper basically gave over 200 yards, and he's coming back. That that receiver, that number one receiver that he loved, he got that. And then Miles Garrett, to me, is one of the best defensive players in the NFL, bar none. That could be your Ray Lewis right there. So that's why I say the Browns, to me, is going to win this game. I don't think it's going to be a blowout, Not no no question about it. But I think they might win about between three to five, three to seven points that the Browns are going to win. I can, I, can, I can see it being 27-20. I mean, it's definitely one of those uh, March Madness kind of, you know, big games, you know. It's like where you got the two upset picks going up against each other, you know. And it, it is cute. And one, and one of the Cinderella stories, you know, one of the Cinderella slippers are going to get kicked off and going to get lost. And somebody's going to have one for an extra week. And, you know, whoever, whoever wins between that game, they're going to, I mean, yeah, I know it's any game on Sunday, but they're going to get beat the next round. I mean, it's not. I don't, <laughs> I'm not seeing Texans or Browns going to the AFC Championship. Like, so let me just be honest with you. It's just, I just, I don't see it. I mean, but it, but it's good. It's good for football. All these matchups are good for football. I mean, the storyline. Let me, you know, let me pull up the phone oh, here. You know, let me let me look at you know. You got for me, you know, being a Lions fan, you got Stafford coming into Ford Field like that. That's huge. You know, that's huge. And then you got you know. I think probably the craziest wild card game, you know, is you got the Chiefs going up against the Dolphins. That was my, you know, at, the, at some point during the season, that was my AFC championship. I was like, okay, that's my AFC championship right there. So you got the Tyreek Hill coming into Arrowhead, you know, it's just, it's just crazy, you know. And then you don't even have, you don't even have Burrow. Burrow got hurt, so you don't have the Bengals in the playoffs. You know, everybody's picking the Bengals to be there. They're not there, so like it's. Yeah, then you got, then you got Mike McCarthy and the Packers and the Cowboys going against each other. Like it's then you got the Eagles Buccaneers once again first round wild card matchup from last year. Like let me let me just awesome. say this. Let me just say this. Who are you guys taking in that Chiefs Dolphins game because they I'm faced each other? The, Dolphins. The Chiefs got the win. Dolphins. Dolphins. Chiefs. Dolphins. The Chiefs they get the win. In the seat in the, earlier in the season, I will say that. If y'all yeah, saw me on uh, looking down, I was looking at the NFL script. I was making sure they wrote the script right, you know, just because you <laughs> was talking about the script. So uh, yeah, you're right about that. Yeah, the script is correct. Yeah, you're right. Okay. So yeah. This storyline is perfect. <laughs> I, honestly, I mean, you just think about it all across the board. Green Bay, Dallas. Mike McCarthy is going against his old team he won a Super Bowl with. Uh, Lions. And then you got the uh Excuse Lions and the uh, Rams, Stafford, golf going against each other. You got yeah, Chiefs, Dolphins, exactly. Tyree going against the Chiefs. I mean, did the script writers write anything better? I mean, this is a great article. I mean, this is an Oscar worthy script they done written for the NFL. 
and we're still gonna watch it too. <laughs> Baker, you know, Baker Mayfield going up against the Eagles after getting his ass whooped earlier in the season. I'm just saying, whoever wrote the script should have been writing for that Golden Gloves, man. Oh God, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I don't know. I mean, but all all I'm saying though is the Chiefs haven't looked any better throughout the season, and they still got the win over the Dolphins. It's not like this. The problems with the receiver core just started now. They've been having problems all season long, and the Dolphins have been one of the teams that they've been able to beat. So, you know, I look at that, and I look at the fact that Patrick Mahomes. Is still on the other side of that football, and I have a hard time picking against the Chiefs, man. I really do. I got I got one team that I pick every week because I'm biased, oh, you know, oh, just oh, like Darren yeah. with fantasy football. You might as well get the blue cheese out, man. <laughs> might as well get the blue cheese out for him. I, I don't I I don't know. Rico's got a lot of green in his background. Let me just say that right now. Oh, 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 that's because Green's nature, not, not because of the Eagles. <laughs> let's, let's, let's be clean about that. We like clean air back here. Now, y'all got ready for shake and bait. That's what y'all got to wait for, shake and bait. That you can make feel. You know, you know, I'm I'm kind of curious. I'm kind of curious. You better start shaking and baking in that run game. Let me tell you right now. I'm just wondering, how the hell did that get the Monday night spot, though, dude? Like, that should be the – that should be the fourth – you know, the 430 uh, – the four thirty Sunday slot, man. That, I would, I would say the Packers Cowboys should be the Monday night game, but listen, man, the, Eagles, the Eagles got a lot of prime time games this year, man. I'm just saying, it, it don't make no sense. But yeah. it, was, it was a lot of prime time games. I think there was maybe like one or two weeks where we were on at one p.m. and that was it. So now we might as well talk about it. We're, we're here. What's going on with you, Eagles, man? Because I mean, I the, the Buccaneers. I'm thinking probably get the upset. But I don't even think it'd even be an upset at this point. I think the pro I think the problem has been obviously injuries. I think there's more than the more than with, you know, health that's been going on that they really haven't been letting out of the house. Especially with Nick Sirianni's recent comments about how tough Jalen Hurts is. I think it has a lot more to do than it has a lot more to do with the broken finger. Um, you know, and I think other than that, you look at this team right now, and I think the problem is they're having a hard time really finding an identity. You know, sometimes, you know, when they ground and pound, they pass the ball. Sometimes when they should be passing the ball, it's a ground and pound game. And the Eagles had different ways to beat you. And they wrote up good plays, good schemes to be able to execute and be able to beat. Because this is the same team that was around last year. A lot of the same players that are on this squad that have been around last year. And I know we lost some in free agency, but I think the real problem this year has been coaching. And I'm not talking about Nick Sirianni. I'm talking about the coordinators that have taken over. You look at some of the plays that they've drawn up, you watch the game, and it just doesn't make any sense. You're not putting guys in the proper positions to be able to make tackles, get stops, especially on the defensive side of the ball, which is where they've really been struggling the most. And, you know, I think the problem this year, it's just been coaching. It's just been the way things have been drawn up. And I think the Eagles, have been trying to do the best that they can with it. But clearly, you know, once the coordinators were lost, we did not hire the right people going into the game. And I know that we do have a squad that can overcome this because you don't go 10 and 1 in a season by accident. I'll say that. You know, you don't beat the Dolphins, you don't beat the Chiefs, you don't beat the Bills, you know, all in span of a few games if this team can't overcome some of the things that have happened to it. So I do think this is still a winnable game for the Eagles. And I think if they're obviously going to win the playoffs, you know, 
They need to be able to get this win, get back to winning ways, and then really just take it from there. So remember, the playoffs at 0-0. It's one game at a time. Any given Sunday, you do that a few times, and you've got a Lombardi. So I think it's a winnable game, and I think this is where you start trying to build that momentum back up. So how do you feel about that you guys just got embarrassed, though, by a Tyrod Taylor-led Giants team, though? I mean, no disrespect to Tyrod. And I, and I, and I, and I want to, and the reason I only said that is because I'm kind of curious for next year, Giants, what are they going to do in the draft? Because I've been seeing, you know, they're going to draft a quarterback. Like, that's a thing. You don't need to be drafting quarterbacks. You need to give Danny Dimes all that money. He, I think he, I think there's a lot more than that. I think they shouldn't have given him that money. They should have gave Saquon the money. But, I mean, I digress on that. But what, how do you feel about that? And, and, what, and, and what do we think about, you know, the quarterback carousel going on in New York? I mean, there's been a carousel of a lot of different things going on in New York. It hasn't just been quarterback. It's been coaches. It's been general managers. You know, they, they, you know, we talk, we talk about my team not finding the right coordinator. The Giants can't find anybody. <laughs> they can't find anybody in any position. The only good player they have, you're right, they should have given Saquon Barkley's buddy because he is all they have yeah. on both offense, mm-hmm. defense. Coaches, general managers, owners, nothing is good about the Giants except Saquon Barkley. Nothing. And the like, thing is, I mean, I get it's the NFL, man. I get it's the NFL. But, you know, you got Tyrod Taylor. I don't want to say he's a consistent quarterback, but it's, it can play. The dude can ball. The dude can ball if he's given a team. I mean, Tommy DeVito, Tyrod Taylor, was any of them going to be a savior in New York and, and, and take that team to the playoffs? No. And, 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 and it, I mean, I think New York is more of a dumpster fire than the, obviously is more of a dumpster fire than the Texan situation. Even if they, even if Daniel Jones was playing. So the Texans thing, that's pretty, you know, and that is what it is. You know, that, it's, it's, like you said, it's, it's remarkable, but they got pieces. But like you said, the only thing they got is Saquon. But the thing is, you got good quarterbacks. Tyrod's, Tyrod can play, Tyrod can ball. And, you know, I think Tommy DeVito put him in the right system. I mean, I think he, I think Tommy DeVito could be better than a uh, uh, Kenny Pickett, and I uh, and I'm not even being crazy. I mean, with Kenny Pickett's not that good. Well, I'm just, but I'm just saying, everybody wanted to make it like, oh, Kenny Pickett's the man. He's the man in in, in Pittsburgh, you know. Hey, Pittsburgh. No, 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 no. Right now, <laughs> I mean, I, I mean, it's uh, I mean, I get no. The one I'm saying is, it took him a whole damn long time for them to put Mason Rudolph in the game. They didn't want Rudolph to play any football games. They said, nope, you don't get to play. No football games for Rudolph. Let me tell you something. They want Mason Rudolph playing over Kenny Pickett right now. I mean, yeah. now because because he went out there and led. It was, it's like if you it's like if you got an opportunity and you're going to go out there and ball, they want the guy balling, not the guy that's out there balling his eyes out in the locker room. And Tyrod, like you said, Tyrod is a winner. I mean, and I'm not saying that because I'm a homer. You know, he is from my area, Seven Cities, in Virginia. He's from Hampton. But Tyrod, every week he has been a winner. I mean, remember, he was with the Bills, and he got into a playoff, and they won a playoff game with him. He's with the Chargers, until, unless, you know, we want to set a conspiracy theory with the doctor, you know, punching his lung, and he was out the whole entire year. He was actually doing something with the Chargers, and now he comes yeah. to the Giants. And then you look at what the Giants, are, and that offense, you like, well, he's moving. He's doing stuff. He's doing yeah. stuff better than Danny Dimes, but he's just that injury prone. But, but everywhere Tyrod goes, you know, he wins. The only issue I see with Tyrod is, one, he's injury prone. And then a, another thing is he's very, very careful. Tyrod is never that type of person that's going there, slaying that rock left and right, and just, just make these like these crazy in-between uh, cut type of pass where he could be intercepted or not. He's very careful. He like, if it ain't there, he'll run or he'll, he'll, he'll check down. So a lot of times he's what we consider boring. But he wins. And what you would think, like Herman Edwards said, you play to win the game, but Tyrod wins games. So when he came to the Giants, I remember I was I said, I said, oh man, if he get in that game, him and Saquon together, they can win some games. And it's showing that they actually look like a pretty uh turnaround team right now. But we put Danny Downs in there. I mean, he, he's trash. I mean, I ain't gonna lie to you. That's how we go against us. The panic goes against Washington, he turns into Michael Vick. But that's another story, and I digress from that. I'll take, I'll take Kenny Pickett over Danny Dimes. 
<laughs> Yo, me too. <laughs> but I would say this. I would say this. I, I think Tyron Tyron should be in the in the league before Derek Carr. That's all I'm saying. Derek Carr had it. <laughs> you have a team in New Orleans. You yeah, got a that's team. That's and, and the thing is, and the thing is, no. The thing is that that's a disappointment. You know, you've got weapons. You've got you, know, you got Chris Olav, and you got you know. Let me you got, let me you, got, you got. Let me tell you something. If I run a play in fantasy, I will run Jameis Winston victory formation before I run anything with Danny Dimes. Okay. Like that 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 that's what that's what that's what we really need to be real with. Jameis Winston victory formation before I let Danny Dimes trip after running 80 yards. Hey, Jameis Winston is the national treasurer. <laughs> that man is gold. No matter what he does, he gold. <laughs> Just cost Dennis Allen his whole job. <laughs> but like he yeah, said, man. it's for the team. The team came together. Two-minute warning. Yeah. Two-minute yeah. warning. That team is staying together because the inmates ran the asylum. But I do want to say thank you so much for helping us get some of these picks out. We really, really appreciate you being on the show with us. And I appreciate you coming on, showing off that Caribbean background, even though that's probably just your living room. That's, that's, where, hey, that's, hey, where, hey, that's where your Philadelphia Eagles are going to be after this weekend, bud. Sandy Beach is about to get replaced with carpet rash right here on Big Boy Sports. I am your host, John Brecco. This is Darren Silver. We are here with the Don Suave, Rico Grant here on Big Boy Sports Radio. We appreciate you being on, man. Thank you so much. We'd love to have you back. I definitely appreciate you, and I'm glad to be back as well. All right, man.